Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. And today I thought I'd show you my quick way of dyeing paper with coffee. So this is the result that I get when I dye my papers. And I thought I would show you this and one other technique of dyeing papers. I have a green linen text weight paper that I've had in my stash for a while. I have several reams of it. And I don't know if you can tell on camera or not how green this one is and how white that one is. And I thought, why not use this for my coffee dyeing because it's going to alter that color completely. Now, you can coffee dye just about any paper. Some papers may rip easier, so you'll have to experiment. But this is probably 20 pound copy paper. I've got a paintbrush, a cup that I have put some hot water, and about two heaping tablespoons of instant coffee that I picked up at the dollar store. Now I've heard some people say they actually drink this stuff, but I wouldn't. <laughs> but it smells like coffee and it dissolves really quickly in hot water. So what I like to do is I have a cookie sheet. It's a nine by 12, nine by 13. And I will dip my paintbrush into the coffee and I paint my papers. Now it will curl at first and depending on how dark you like it if you like a a darker paper keep applying the coffee to it if you don't like it so dark don't put as much don't put as much coffee in it so all I'll do is just go over the whole page with my paintbrush on one side and then I will flip it over and do the other side some people like to dip their paper. I find that when I do the dip method, I want to do a bunch and I have to have a surface that I don't worry about getting dirty. I also have to have the space in order to lay the pages out to dry. So you can see, I just lay it all into a tray. When I'm done with my paintbrush, I'll put it into some clean water. I will sometimes reuse the coffee for a couple of days if I want to do several. And then I dry my page. So you can dry your page by laying it somewhere flat and let it dry however long it takes in your area. Sometimes it'll just take a couple of hours. It may do it overnight. Some people will use a heat tool. And I have even used an iron in order to get my pages dry. So what I did with mine was I laid out a towel and then I laid my papers on top. I cleaned my iron and then I used a high setting and ironed my papers. So that's how I got these done. This is a piece of cardstock. It's a linen cardstock, so it's got a nice texture to it. And that's how I painted those and then let this air dry overnight. Another technique is I went ahead and coated the paper with coffee and then I laid down a stencil. So this is how I did the first one. I laid down the stencil in my pan. I coated my paper and I laid the, stencil, the paper on top of the stencil. And then I laid another stencil on top and I just kept doing that until I had all the colors. Now, my stencils were not clean. When I use mine with Tattered Angels, I don't wash them unless I know I want to change to a different color and I don't want it to be contaminated. I didn't uh, clean them. So in this one, it has just a little bit of a ghosting of a teal on here. What I thought was interesting was how the texture came out. So this was the stencil on the bottom and then this was the stencil that was on top. So you got some neat texture there. And I just kept doing that with the stencil. So the stencils here, this is my uh, Baroque floral, I believe it is. This is my Victorian screen, I think. It's Victorian. And then this is from the Enchanted Rose subscription box stencil. So that's this stencil. You can see the patterns on it. I thought it was interesting that the pattern kind of bled through to both sides. And then this was the back side. So this was laying on top of the stencil. This is the uh, cross-stitched buttons, I think is what it's called. Yeah, cross-stitched buttons. And then here's where it was stuck to the 
stencil, the pattern that it made. This is from the Artistic Stencil Club for, I believe it's December, maybe November, but I just thought that pattern was kind of cool on there. And then this is the Connected Flower Stencil. It was laying on top, but it really came through on the back side. Now it's going to have some shiny spots where the coffee pooled and it was touching the stencil. Some people will add baking soda to their coffee before they paint it onto their papers or dip their papers to help with that shiny look to it. It also kind of helps a little bit with the acidity. I'm, you know, I'm doing art projects and I know from my experience that these papers will last for as long as I want them to last. So I just thought I would share really quick like how to easily coffee dye some paper. I hope you like this. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Comment below if you have any comments or questions. And of course, if you want to know more about the stencils that I use, check the description box. I'll list them there. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.